Sorry, praise the Lord. Give sorry, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, and give Denise, forgive, promote, clean up. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord, hallelujah. <clears throat> Okay, let us start our class with a word of prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But with the Demis Ogis, would you please pray and start our class? Demis. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful moment. Thank you, Jesus, for studying a word of God. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Thank you. We bless our uh, facility, we bless our pastors, we bless whatever we learn, let it be practical to our lives, Jesus. Uh, let it uh, let it all be in our uh, life, Jesus. We bless each and every one. Uh, sorry, Pastor, can you hear? Actually, I have some issue with the... Yes, I can hear, yes. Okay, uh, thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful moment. Thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day. We bless all of us, all of the faculties, all of them in all in mighty Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, good evening to everybody. Thank you for coming to this class. Even though we have a busy schedule and uh, God has given us a great thirst for hearing the word of God and obeying and giving that word to other people. So we are called for that. Bible says that church is the reconciled community of God and the reconciling community of God. On one side, we are the reconciled community of God. We have the reconciliation with the God, Father, by accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord. So we are already reconciled community of God. But at the same time, we have a, a mission. We have a task that is the reconciling community of God in this world. We have a word of reconciliation. As Paul says in 2 Peter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 19, 20, 21, 22, it is written like that. The word of reconciliation is given to us, the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So we have a message to the world and the world be reconciled with God. That's a message we have to mm -hmm. share with the world. So by knowing all these 
we have to study the word of god these classes are not to simply enhance our knowledge to not uh, not to simply cherish our knowledge but we need a thorough knowledge about the word of god at the same time we have to share with other people we have to lead other people to the knowledge of jesus christ that's our ultimate concept so that's a practical result god want <clears throat> from us so by knowing all this uh, we can enter into the class shall we sing a song uh, i think uh, 12 hour participants including me so we have to expect some more so before entering into the class shall we sing a song and uh, praise our god and with that we will enter to the class everyone can sing otherwise i will sing okay please sing bring sacrifice of praise unto the house of the lord we bring sacrifice of praise unto the house of the lord and we offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer unto you sacrifices of praise we bring sacrifice praise of Lord. praise unto thank you and welcome you all still singing Talking about service. Rasta, continue. Rasta, can you hear us? I think net has problem. Yeah. I think process internet is disconnected. Okay, sorry that sometimes it happens. Okay, we are completely depends from the technology. Um, sometimes it happens, no problem. I, I hope that it will not come uh, repeat. Anyway, good evening to everybody. Uh, I think you all are happy uh, in your life, your job, your family. and uh, even though uh, we have very tight schedule i appreciate you to uh, appreciate you for separating this valuable time to study the word of god so we cannot simply waste the time um, i welcome you all for a serious study of the word of god <clears throat> when i was reading a book that was written by juan carlos ortiz juan carlos ortiz he said Argentinian pastor. Uh, I think ten, fifteen years back, I have read that book two, three times. That's mainly regarding the disciples, discipleship book. Juan Carlos Ortiz. He was from uh, Argentina. He was a wonderful pastor, and he was a Bible teacher. And he ha- he he has written so many books. And this is the wonderful book, uh, discipleship. the cost of discipleship in that book he has uh, explained the three dangers of the church three dangers of the church first one according to him first danger is the eternal childhood of believers the eternal childhood of believers eternal childhood of believers means even after um, the believer who lives for the lord after 10 years 15 20 20 30 years they don't know bible exactly what it is they are not there to share the word of god with other people there is no maturity there is no growth as paul says you are babes babes that what we see in the first corinthians chapter 2 and 3 <clears throat> we know that in, in in that first corinthians chapter 2 and 3 paul uh, introducing about three types of people carnal natural man carnal man and spiritual man exactly in the church we have a uh, two types of people carnal and the spiritual carnal means there is no spiritual growth there is no spiritual growth 
So, Juan Carlos, in his book, he tells that in the church, we can see uh, mainly three dangers, according to him. The first one is eternal childhood of believers. Even after many years of Christian life, they are not able to study the word of God and share the word of God. Even they cannot memorize the word of God. They are spiritual bugs, always looking for milk, spiritual milk, milk. They are not able to have the solid food. They are spiritual bugs. The second, pro second problem, danger in the church, according to him, is misplacement of believers. Misplacement of believers. When you go to, or you go to a library, a, a classified library, there is a section by section uh, book arrangement. Suppose uh, if you imagine philosophy book, if it's uh, placed in, in a one on one philosophy, if it is one on one, all the philosophy books will come there in one on one and point one three like that in a classified library. And uh, sometimes religion will be in 400 and history will be in 300. Theological books may be in, in our history, it may be 900, something like that. If we take a philosophy book from 101 and I'm placing it in 300 section, 300 section, there are another shelf, another section, even, not, even it is not in the same shelf also, in other section, we can call that book is a misplaced book, misplaced book. Misplaced book is a lost one. When we are asked to write an uh, assignment on philosophy and we are searching that valuable book from that section, if it will not be there, it will, it, it will be in another session. That's a misplaced one. So we cannot make use of that book because we cannot imagine that that philosophy book from 101, it is in the 300. Someone has done that. Not a, 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 a student who is searching for the philosophical valuable book from the uh, one on one, he cannot find it there because that's a misplaced one. Misplaced. It is there in the library, but that is misplaced. According to him, misplaced the one is lost one. Misplaced one is lost one. What it means in the church? How can we take it to the church? Juan Carlos says that misplaced one is lost one because. We are not builded up in the church according to our call of God. There is no building up. Because sometimes we can accuse our leaders, elders, and pastor, even pastor. Pastor maybe uh, fearing that if that believer <laughs> come up like that, if he started to preach well, he will be a threat to me. So, okay, he let me there. So the pastors sometimes or some elders may not help us and encourage us. That's what happens everywhere. So misplaced one is lost one. Every pastor who is assigned to place each stone in a place according to the call and the ability of a person, the pastor must understand in the ability and the call of God and, uh, and the caliber of a believer and uh, a pastor should uh, mold him and make him and encourage him and place in a place in, 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 a, uh, in, in a church as a stone in a place when we have to give him opportunities and everything. If sometimes believers, they cannot find what, uh, what ability, what uh, ministry or what uh, gift God has given to him or her. So we can conclude like that, a misplaced one is lost one. If we are called to do something and we are not doing that one and we are a misplaced one, there's no use for the kingdom of God. Sometimes we can accuse other people, but uh, it is not a uh, voice to accuse other people. If we have a constant and intimacy with God, God will bless us and raise us and use wonderfully for the expansion of the kingdom of God. So misplaced one is lost one. We should not be misplaced one. We must be used by God for the furtherance and development of the kingdom of God. That's why 
this program is here and we are gathered together here that's it that should be ultimate aim it is not simply to enhance our knowledge but uh, knowledge is very important but we have to put everything for the furtherance of kingdom of god okay we should be make sure that for what god has called us okay third one third danger in the church is disunity disunity united we stand even when we fall that's a uh, uh, that's a, a world class saying united we stand divide when we fall in the family in our in in a workplace in the church in society everywhere it's a slogan that we have to stand together disunity that's the uh, uh, main weapon of the satan to uh, destroy family church and society so we have to make use of these three uh, dangers in the church that is uh, advocated by juan carlos ortiz a german pastor i uh, consider this is saying very preciously i used to think about that i mold myself and i used to teach in the church first one is uh, eternal childhood of believers birth is very important growth also is very important growth also is very important so eternal childhood we can see a river a river at times that there is no growth development they are not able to eat solid food always they need spiritual milk okay second is misplacement of believer misplaced one is a lost one third one is disunity anyway we must be very careful about uh, these dangers in the church uh, once we understand all these things we have to say to other people and uh, we have to stand for the uh for the rest of the kingdom of god that's our ultimate aim. okay come back let's come back uh let's uh, okay 10 30 okay i think 13 13 okay we will uh, start our class with our bible quiz okay that's our, our uh, usual procedure and uh, now we will get you will get uh, 15 questions and you have to answer that as usual Oh, sorry, can you send it? Tell me. Link. Link again. Question. Question. Yeah. Yeah, it comes.
Okay, once you finish, tell me. <clears throat> finish question. finish okay I, I think everybody finished okay any doubt regarding questions no doubt no doubt usually I ask very simple questions because uh, I asked from the class itself <coughs> Okay, sorry to say that we don't have a PowerPoint today. Uh, some tight schedule and physical illness uh, cost for that. Sorry that uh, we don't have the PowerPoint today. And we will do uh, next class everything in proper. Last two weeks, we had a very nice uh, PowerPoint presentation and everything. It was very clear. There's no doubt, but uh, Today we have to, you have to listen everything from me. That's a very sad that, but I think uh, we need to come uh, close with that way also. Okay. Anyway, next week we will do that. Uh, sorry for that. But let me say a few words again uh, 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 regarding as assignments. Assignments. I have written five assignments here. But uh, you can choose two out of five. Okay, let me read that very. Uh, the, the pro problem is uh, I, we, I cannot uh, uh, share with you in the screen. That's a problem today. But anyway, Pastor, 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 you can read it while I'll, I'll type it uh, and I'll put it in the chat. OK. OK, we will have a five, but uh, you, you can choose any two. OK, first one, what is apocrypha? What is apocrypha? What is apocrypha? Question mark. Why do we reject apocrypha? What is apocrypha? Why do we reject apocrypha? That's the first assignment. Okay, second one. Can I say? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, second one. How does the Trinity operate together? How does the Trinity operate together? How does the Trinity operate together in the regeneration of a sinner? How does the Trinity operate together in the regeneration of a sinner? Pastor, one more time. How does the Trinity operate? How does the Trinity operate together in the regeneration of a sinner? In a in in the regeneration of a sinner. In the regeneration of a sinner. Okay. Third is the union of deity and humanity of Christ. Third one, the union of deity and humanity of Christ. That's it, Pastor. Yeah, that's uh, that's the first fourth one. Next, describe briefly the cause and nature of the describe briefly the cause and the nature of the atonement, death of Jesus Christ. Na cause and nature of the atonement, death of Jesus Christ, by narrating the various theories, by narrating the various theories. Atonement Pastor, of Jesus Christ by narrating the various theories. Pastor, one more thing. Atonement theories. Describe okay. briefly. Pastor one, more. Pastor, one more time. The, the Describe question. briefly. Okay. Describe briefly the cause and nature of the atonement, that of Jesus Christ. Atonement, that of Jesus Christ, comma, by narrating the various theories. By narrating the various theories. 
narrating various theories. Theories means atonement theories. There are many atonement theories. Excuse me, Pastor. Pastor, we were not able to hear. Can you tell from the beginning? We were not able to hear. Okay, describe briefly. Fourth one. Yes, describe briefly the. Yeah, it is in the screen. Okay, describe briefly. It is in the chat window. Uh, chat window. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Describe briefly. Briefly, the cause and nature of the atonement death of Jesus Christ by narrating the various theories. Last one, last one. Fifth one, what are the distinctive activities? What are the distinctive activities of the Holy Spirit? What are the distinctive activities of the Holy Spirit? What are the distinctive activities of the Holy Spirit? Throughout the history of the Bible. Throughout the history of the Bible. Describe briefly. What are the distinctive activities of the Holy Spirit throughout the history of the Bible? Describe briefly. Okay, these are the five assignments, but you can choose any two, any two. You can choose any two. Mm, I think you, you know that the size of the assignment as you write, usually you can write, I think, type one, two page or three page, like that. I don't, uh, I don't exactly what is convenient for you because uh, we don't have the library here. You have to collect everything from the um, online library and all. Pastor, uh, two pages is okay. And uh, which is the last date? Two pages is okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't tell, but uh, I, I think I, I am giving the <laughs> opportunity to you according to your convenience and before yeah mm, this is a third class we have totally 12 classes it's a third class okay by seven or eight i think uh, that may come seventh week or the eighth week you can give one by one okay okay you, you can give by third fourth fifth or sixth week one done you can give last uh, second one the ten, tenth week. We can arrange like that. Eight and ten or seven and ten. Pastor, only one assignment, right? No. You can select two out of five. Okay. Okay. And then the first one around the fifth or sixth week, and the last one around the tenth uh, week. Uh, yes. Yes. First one, you can, okay, seventh, okay, seventh, is it possible by seventh week? Now, one Make more. Make it eight, eight is okay. Yes. Okay, eight and ten. give the second one by tenth. Pastor, you can tell the date, no, dates. Pardon? Tell the date, which date is on. Eighth class and tenth class. Okay, uh, okay. 8th class and 10th class. We have total, I think, um, June 19th is the last 12th week, last class 12th, June 12th. So it will be 22, uh -huh. 22nd of May. That will be the 8th class. And June 5th will be the 10th class. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, it's okay. Okay. I don't need to say great burden. Um,
No, Pastor, it's not a burden. Yeah. Okay. Five. You, you can choose. Okay, no problem. You can choose. Uh, we don't. We have to depend on the online everything for we don't have that i have few books but uh, how can i give you that one i could never convince that may not be um, convenient to everyone to share that also <clears throat> there will be shortage of uh, getting book or not okay anything <clears throat> okay uh, susan so sister is duty so is she is absent that's uh, excuse the absent eh? okay she got the permission okay let's come back uh, to the subject today bibliology bibliology we will start with the bibliology uh, so it is said that okay we have to you have to hear everything and you have to take note class class note okay at last you will get the note of the entire class anyway in the last class we have studied that there are two types of revelations there are two types of revelation general revelation and special revelation general revelation and special revelation as we know general revelation is nature history and our moral consciousness these are the three general revelations second one is special revelation as we know jesus christ and bible word of god written word of god is the revelation of god that's the message of god second is jesus christ jesus christ is the imprint of god imprint and he is the statue of god that what we see the colossians chapter 1 verse 15 colossians chapter 1 verse 15 that we can see jesus as the image of god he is the statue of god he is the imprint of god imprint that term we can see from uh, hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 hebrews chapter 1 if you want take and read you can take okay as a class that i think that will make more better to understand things clearly can you hear well yes pastor yes pastor can you hear me yes pastor we can hear okay okay hebrews chapter 1 was as in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person I mean, and upholding the express image of the express image in some of the translation it is it is written like that is imprint of god imprint imprint an image okay it shows that jesus is proceeded and he is sharing the same image of god he is having the same substance of god imprint of god image statue okay so when we take the special revelation there are two things the one is jesus christ next is the written word of god written word of god so we are now specifically looking on the written word of god that's a bibliology bibliology means bibliology means the study of bible all the science of bible science of bible or study of bible that's bibliology that's all. In the last class we have studied that theology means the word comes from two greek words theos and logos theos means god logos means study all science the last class last week we have a bible quiz in the first two questions uh, from that theology the word greek words i asked that question so uh, i think you know that theos means god logos means study or science so when we put it here in the bibliology it's a study of bible it's a study of the word of god written word of god okay um, what is meant by the phrase word of god what is meant by 
the phrase word of god bread of god actually there are several different meanings taken by this phrase in the bible when we analyze the phrase word of god we can take it in several different meanings several several different meanings that we'll look in the in the, in the beginning of this class it is helpful to distinguish these different senses clearly at the beginning of the study okay so this is i want to tell that when we take the bibliology that's the study of bible or we can put word of god word of god the phrase word of god phrase word of god we can take the the phrase word of god in several different meanings in several different meanings word of god okay first of all we will see word of god as a person word of god as a speech by god okay word of god as a person word of god as speech by god one is person and the speech i think you can follow my words so we don't have the powerpoint today uh i will slowly but slowly i will uh, tell you uh, and make clear sort of, uh, if you have any problem yes. you can tell me yeah. frankly to no problem we have to write any, down the notes so any criticism please, uh, so i am not go down no anyway we down. have to study the word of god that's all there is no ego problem here we all are equal uh we all you all are professionals also in your field so i respect you all anyway we are studying the word of god so make everything clear that um tell me anything if Uh, you want to make first uh, so you can speak okay 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 I think James, brother James was telling something. Brother James was telling something. Okay, tell us, sir. Ah, uh, James, sir. First, uh, can you slow down a bit because while writing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I, I said I will so by slowly, slowly I will tell. Today uh, I am so much concerned about that. I will by slowly, slowly I will tell. Anyway, today we have to cover the three hours, and um, I will make everything clear for you. Okay. Now we are started to study bibliology. that the study of word of god study of word of god and when we take the word of god the phrase word of god phrase word of god we can take it in several different meanings we can take it in several different meanings in the bible okay i already we have covered that word of god when we take the word of god we can divide into two mainly we can divide into two we can divide into two one is word of god as a person second word of god as speech by god word of god as a person word of god as speech by god okay it is very simple that uh word of god we can take it into two uh, ways one is as a person that jesus christ the word of god as a person the person is jesus christ the bible we see jesus christ as the word of god so word of god as a person jesus christ word of god speech by god as speech by god that is the written word of god that's a written word of god word of god as a person jesus christ and word of god as a speech by god that is written word of god okay we will see something about the first one the word of god as a person jesus christ you can write that title word of god as a person jesus christ that's that, that uh, is a small heading word of god as a person jesus christ 
Okay, sometimes the Bible refers to the Son of God as the Word of God. Okay, sometimes the Bible refers to the Son of God as the Word of God. Son of God as the Word of God. Bible refers Son of God as the Word of God. And for example, a book of, in book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 13, Revelation chapter 19 verse 13, John sees the risen Lord Jesus in heaven and says, the name by which he is called the word of God. In book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 13, John the apostle sees the son Jesus Christ in heaven and says that the name by which he is called word of God. Okay, shall we read that verse so it will be very clear that what John the apostle says about the son Jesus Christ in heaven. He was he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. Yeah. So here, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is called or referred as the Word of Word of God. Okay. Shall we move? Similarly, in the in the beginning of John's Gospel. Similarly, in the beginning of John's Gospel, we read John one one. That's a Gospel. In the beginning of the Gospel of John, we read, in the beginning, there was Word, Word was with God, Word was God. Gospel of John 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 1. John records like that. In the beginning, there was Word, Word was with God, Word was God. And also in the verse 14, in the verse 14, the same chapter, same book, Verse 14, John next says that it is clear that John speaking the Son of God, Son of God, here in the verse 14, he says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's John chapter 1, verse 14, 1 4. Okay, in, in, in these two references, Book of Revelation chapter 19, 13, and John 1, 1, the same book again says in the 1, 14, that Son of God as Word of God, Word of God, Word, Word. But it is not common in the entire Bible. Only in this limited Bible verses only we see the Son of God as the Word of God. But it does indicate that among the members of the Trinity, it is especially God the Son who is uh, who in his person as well as in his words has the role of communicating character of God communicating character of God to us and of expressing the will of God for us. Okay, why? The question is here, we have seen Jesus Christ or the Son of God as the Word of God. Why it is written like that? Let me say that in the Trinitarian Godhead, in the Trinitarian Godhead, second person, Jesus Christ, the Son, is standing as the role of communicating the character of God to us and expressing the will of God to us. In that sense, the communicating the character of God and expressing the will of God, in that sense, Son of God is mentioned here as the word. Communicating something, communicating something through his character and through expressing the will of God. That's why Son of God is called as Word of God. 
I think it is clear. If you have any doubt, you can ask, okay. What I what I'm trying to say is Son of God is designated here as the word. Why? Because in the Trinitarian members, God the Son, who is in his person as well as in words, has the role of communicating the character of God to us and expressing the will of God for us. Community, communicating the character of God to us and expressing the will of God to us. Because of these two things, there's a communication, communicating the message, communicating the character of God, communicating the will of God to us. In that sense, Son of God is mentioned here as a word of God. Anyway, God wants to, through his life and his words, want to communicate with us the character of God. Who Character of God means who really God is. And his characters, as we know, in God, there are two types of character uh, that we will study under the theology proper. When we study theology proper, that we will, de we will deal with the uh, attributes of God. Anyway, let me say, uh, according to this context, the character of God is communicative and incommunicative. Communicative attributes of God and incommunicative attributes of God. Anyway, through Jesus' life, he want to share, communicate the character of God, who God is really, and has seen the will of God. Okay, I think this is too much explanation regarding uh, word of God as a person, Jesus Christ. Okay, one minute. You have any any doubt? Otherwise, we will move. Okay. Okay. Very simple. Okay. Uh, are you satisfied with the speed and everything? Because we don't have the PowerPoint that so I think you can understand everything this week. Okay. We will move uh, to the second one. The word of God as a speech by God. That's the main concern. There we uh, <clears throat> come to understand the bibliography under this one. Okay. We are moving to second one. The word of God as, as speech by God. Speech by God. You, you can write that one. The word of God as speech by God. Word of God as speech by God. We are going to take the speech by God in four levels. Four levels. Okay? Four levels. In four ways. From the down through the, uh, the beginning of the Bible or the creation of the human being or the nature we can we can understand god who communicates who speeches with us so we can take it in the four level the fourth one will be bible written word of god so when we start to uh, understand each one one by one when we come to the fourth point that will be written form of the word of god so we will start with the first one God's decrees, God's decrees. You can write one, first one, God's decrees. Okay, now we are concentrating word of God as speech by God, speech, speech. As a person that is Jesus Christ, that is over that we have studied. Now we are right coming to the word of God as a speech by God. Okay, understand that speech by God. Under the speech by God, we are going to take that in four levels. Followers. First one, God's decrees. God's decrees. God's decrees. The God's decrees. Okay, let me explain that. Sometimes God's words, words take the form of powerful decrees that cause events to happen or even cause things to come into being. Okay, if there is nothing, in the, in, the, in the beginning of the book of Genesis, we read that in, in Genesis chapter 1, 3, and even the 1, 1 also, God created heavens and earth. That was by uttering, 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 by speech, God created everything. 
by speech. So we are starting the speech of God from God's utterance or God's decrees. God's decrees. Let me read that sentence once again. Sometimes God's words take the form of powerful decrees. Sometimes God's words take the form of powerful decrees that cause events to happen. That cause the events to happen. That's very important. When God utters something, something takes place. Something happens. It is not vain. Something takes place and happens. So sometimes God's words take the form of powerful decrees that cause events to happen or events to happen or even cause things to come into being. Even cause things to come into being. Okay. When I take some examples from the book of Genesis, it will be more clear. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay. God said, there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. That would have written in the, in, in the beginning of this uh, passage. God's words take the form of powerful decrees that cause events to happen, events to happen, or even cause things to come into being. Here, one example, already we have read in verse chapter, chapter 1, verse 3, Genesis. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God uttered. That was that's a God's decree, God's speech, God's decree. Let there be light, and there was light. Okay, God even created the animal world by speaking his powerful words. God even created the animal world by speaking his powerful words. That what we see in uh, okay, the, uh, the, the whole first chapter of the book of Genesis. When we take the creation of day one, day two, day three, day four, five, six. Every day we can see the utterance of God, the, the decrees of God. Whenever God says something, events take place, events, events to happen, happens, or even cause things to come into being. One more example, Genesis chapter 1, verse 24. Then God said, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. Yeah. When God says something, things happen. And things come into being. Okay. Uh, I don't think I, I want to share everything because already you, you have studied something, uh, something related to Old Testament uh, survey or theology like that in the first class under Shibu Thomasar. You might have studied something about that when he dealt with the book of Genesis. Otherwise, you will study in, in the, the book of Pentateuch. Pentateuch. If you have uh, Pentateuch, the topic Pentateuch in, in, the, in the syllabus, the MDF syllabus, you will come across with the, uh, uh, the certain things that are, I want to tell now. It strictly did not come <laughs> uh, under this subject, but anyway, I, I want to tell that. Anyway, we will study under Pentateuch, Pentateuch if that course is offering. Others you might have heard from Shibutu Ansar. Okay. Bara and Asa. Creation. When we study the, take, study the creation, Bara and Asa. That's a decree of God. That's utterance of God. Okay. Let there be light. There was light. That's a decree of God. That's a speech of God. There be light. But one thing is, we have to notice, Bara and Asa. Bara and Asa. Bara means or ex nihilio, ex nihilio, 
created something out of nothing. Created something out of nothing. Out of nothing. That is bara ex nihilio. We can say ex nihilio. Created something out of nothing. There was no substance, but God in his authority, he uttered. There was decree. Whenever he speaks something, something happens. And the things to come into being. So that's the power of God. That's the creative power of God. So bara means or ex nihilio, creating something out of nothing. The second Hebrew word is asa. Asa. Asa means creating out of something. The creation of a human being, Adam. And he formed and breathed in his nozzle. And he created from clay, that what we say clay, or, or from mud. So created from something, something. Okay. So when we take creation, bara and asa, bara means or ex nihilio, ex nihilio, creating something out of nothing. Asa means creating out of something. Creating out of nothing, creating something out of something from given substance that's reforming and making some other things. That's the creation of human being. So this is a God's decree that we see in the in, in, in the book of Genesis and the Old Testament also. Everywhere in the New Testament also, Jesus said that. Okay. I have the mercy, I have the mercy. Be healed. Whenever God says something, there's a speech, something happens there. That's also the God's, God's decree. The speech comes, the word comes out of God. It's God's decree. I think it's very clear that. Okay, one more example. Uh, Psalms 33, 6. Psalm 33, 6. Psalms 33, 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Yes, means uh, we can conclude it like that, everything created out of the speech of God, from the word of God. When he opens the mouth and says something, things is, is taking place, and uh, things to come in be, to be. Okay. But that's all. Oh, these powerful and creative words from God are often called God's decrees. Okay? These powerful, creative words from God words from God are often called God's decrees. It is very clear. I don't think any, 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 any doubt. These powerful creative words from God are often called God's decrees. Okay? A decree of God, a decree of God is a word of God that causes something to happen. A decree of God is a word of God that causes something to happen. That what we studied so far and through the examples from the Bible and from Bara and Asa and Exilio, I was trying to explain. It is so clear, I think. No need of any doubt. A decree of God is a word of God that causes something to happen. That's There's a power in the utterance of God, the decree of God. Okay, these decrees of God include not only the events of the original creation, but also the continuing existence of all things. It is not for, uh, we cannot limit it in, in the book of Genesis or the book of Psalms. Even today, even today, it continues. That's why I've said in the, in the, in the ministry of Jesus also, Jesus said, and uh, when he opened the eye and mouth and ear and crippled, they healed and jumped, they're walking like that and praising God. And uh, when Jesus said, uh, 
uh, he, he, he commanded to uh, the nature against wind and wolves that took place there's a decree of god decree there's a power decree of god and when it comes out something happens that's a decree of god so in the jesus ministry we we see that because since he's god and jesus said to the lame man in the mark chapter 2 jesus your your sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven the acceptance of jesus that's decree that's when jesus uttered that yeah it it, it 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 that his sins were forgiven that happened there when one of the thieves said that lord remember me when you come in the glory when they come the glory one of the thieves who crucified with jesus said like that and jesus said, you will be with me in paradise you will be with me in the paradise so when jesus utters something that the, the decree of god is the word of god when it comes out something takes place something happens okay what i'm trying to conclude here is that these decrees of god include not only the events of the original creation Original creation that what we see the book of Genesis exactly in the one one and in in rearrangement of the creation story in book of Genesis one and two chapters in Psalms thirty three six also referring the creation okay Psalms thirty three six also referring the creation even even in the in the ministry of Jesus also we can see the decree of God. But one, two, one thing I have to say as a concluding word, these decrees of God include not only the events of the original creation, but also the continuing existence of the things. Also, the continuing existence of all things. That what we see in the Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Part of the uh, that words we have already read, but for uh, some other purpose, uh, that what to prove that Jesus is the same imprint of God, sharing the same statue of God. Now, we are again going to read the Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, that with another purpose, because the continuing, the utterance is uh, existing even now, the continuing existence of all things, even the utterance, the decree of God is continuing. We cannot simply limit to the original creation of the whole world. That what we see in the Hebrews chapter 1, 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself. Yes. It tells that Christ is continually upholding the universe. There's another verse. Okay, upholding the universe by his word of power, upholding the universe by or everything by his word of power. Okay, in the, in the, the book of Genesis, uh, sorry, Hebrews, first of three words, when we take the first three, we can see three speciality, the wonderful things related to Jesus Christ. That verse shows that the verses show that Jesus Christ is God, God. So one of the evidences or one of the uh, uh, things of the seven things they are mentioned in the first three verses of the book of Hebrews is upholding the universe by the, his word of power, word of power. So we cannot simply limit or satline the decree of God with the original creation, even in the ministry of Jesus and in upholding the entire universe, uh, universe by his word of power so it, it 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 continues it continues okay that is what i want to tell about uh, the first part of god's degree so so far we have studied the biblio under bibliology word of god can be taken into two one as a person that is jesus christ and as a speech, we can 
take four things under speech. First is God's decree, that is with the creation, upholding the earth, even the ministry of Jesus and everything we see. When G there is a decree, something takes place, happens, coming to being. When we take the all creation that, uh, that we can see, uh, even, even God who upholding everything with the speech. That's a God's decree. Okay, first point is God's decree under speech. Second one, second one. God's words of personal address. 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 That's the second point. Okay. God sometimes communicates with the people on earth by speaking directly to them. God sometimes communicates with the people on earth by speaking directly to them. This can be called instances of God's word of God, God's word of personal address. This can be called instances of God's word or personal address, personal address. That's a simply God who communicates. That's a simple, simple way we can say God who communicates with the people. Okay, that's all. Always God's God who communicates with the people. That's a personal address, personal address, personal address. We are coming to the Bible, okay, but we have to come step one, step two, step three, but the fourth step is the written word of God that we are going to study under the bibliology, but we have to come there. What happens uh, in the earlier, since we have the printed uh, form of the Bible in our hearts, what happens before that, prior to the, the form of the Bible, what we use, what happened, how God speaks, uh, uh, the decrees, the, the personal, and uh, another is per prophetical like, like that. There by stages and stages it came. Okay, now another way say, we can say that there is oral and uh, oral and written oral message. Okay, here second one the God's words, God's words of personal address. Simply, what I already have said, God always communicates with the people, the personal address. Okay, for example, examples are found throughout the Bible scripture. So many examples. At the very beginning of creation, God speaks to Adam. God speaks to Adam. God who communicates with the human being always. Okay, personal address. Here is the personal address. Okay, that you have to make on that. The decree, God's decree means with the creation and uh, upholding the earth. Okay, uh, some creative power. Okay, Jesus also, when he was in the ministry, that's a creative power. When human being lacking something, something uh, physical infirmities were there, he was, he, he was creating something and he was healing that. That's a God's decree. But now we are in the second point, we are dealing with the personal communication with the human being. That's the, okay. At the very beginning of creation, God speaks to Adam. That what we see in the chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Even the first chapter also, replenish the earth. That's, a, that's the words of God. Replenish the earth. Replenish the earth. Here, specifically in chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. God, God who speaks or communicates with the Adam. Adam. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, hmm. Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Okay, that's God who commanded to Adam. So it's a communication of God, communication, the personal address, personal address, personal address. What to do and what not to do. Okay, do's and do notes. Do's and do notes. And God who made a beautiful garden, Garden of Eden, and uh, trees were there, and everything was there. What happened? God brought Adam there 
and eat there and tilt and keep it not sit that was duty that was the um, duty and the opportunity and, and responsibility there and certainly he gave some commands you can eat or everything but you cannot eat uh, the fruit of the good and evil so when you eat you will die that's a command okay god who com communicates with the human that's the point here so that's a message of god god who communicates with the persons here the personal address okay next comes to genesis chapter 3 16 and uh, 16 to 19. genesis chapter 3 verse 16 to 19. after the sin of adam and eve god still comes and speaks directly and personally to them in the words of curse even after uh, committing sin adam and eve god who com communicates with them speaks with them that's directly 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 and personally that is more or less that's the words of curse genesis chapter 3 verse 16 to 19. somebody and will... i will and i will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel to the woman he said i will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in pain you shall bring forth children your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it and all the days of your life. Okay, here we get God, even after Adam and Eve uh, committed sin, violated the rule, God still comes and speaks directly and personally with them. Okay, the form of course. Okay, anyway, God who speaks communicates with the people. Another prominent example of another prominent example of God's direct personal address to the people of uh, Israel, yeah, or later later on on earth, people with on earth is found in the giving of the Ten Commandments. Another prominent example of God's direct personal address. To people on earth is found in the giving of the Ten Commandments that we see in the Exodus chapter 20, verse 1, 1 to 3. And God spoke all and these words, saying, Okay, I am the Lord. And your God, God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage you shall have no other gods before me yeah so it is very clear that god who speaks with the people okay let me move uh in the notice and also we see uh, examples in in the notice at jesus baptism god the father spoke with a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son and well pleased that what we see in the Matthew chapter 3 verse 70, 70. Okay, in the noticement also at the time of baptism of Jesus Christ the Father who spoke the voice from heaven. It's very clear and plain. This is my beloved son in whom I well pleased. Okay, Matthew chapter 3, 70. Okay, there also and suddenly, okay. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I, I am well pleased. Yes. Okay. It is very clear through these uh, examples. Okay. Let me conclude this part. In this and uh, several other instances where God spoke words with words of personal address to individual people, it was clear to hear us that these words, uh, words were the actual word of God. When the people of uh, Adam and Eve, and later on Israel, people of Israel, when Jesus also heard at the time of the baptism, the people who heard the voice of God, uh, the, the, the word of God, uh, they could recognize that actual word of God. When God communicated with the people in different ages, personally, uh, as a group, uh, uh, there in, in, in Sinai, 
we can understand, we can know that the people recognize the words of God as the word of God, words of God. That's the command of God. So they were hearing God's very voice and they were therefore hearing words that absolute divine authority and they were absolutely trustworthy. Okay, Adam, Eve, even the serpent there, later on Israel, and even Jesus in the, in, the, in the time of baptism, when they heard the voice of God, that was absolutely the divine authority, with the, the divine authority and absolutely that was trustworthy. So let me conclude with like that. When God who communicates personally, the people who heard the voice, they could recognize that as the words of God, an absolute divine authority was there and absolutely that was trustworthy. So let me conclude that part by two and we will have a uh, 10 or 15 minutes break now and we will move to third point that is God's word as speech through human lips that's the prophets that's another third stage okay first one God's decree second one as we uh, see right now to the God's word of personal address third will be the God's words as speech through human lips mainly prophets then comes the Return word. Okay, that's the uh, content we uh, have to deal with the, in this introductory part of this bibliology. So now we will have 10, 10 or 13 minutes of break. Thank you. So, okay, shall we start our class? God bless you. Okay, anyway, even though we have, uh, we are lacking the uh, PowerPoint, our brother, brother John brother made the notes and it is on the chat box and you will get uh, by mail. Anyway, thank you, John brother. What are things we have studied so far? It is in the, in the screen, okay, the chat box. You will get that. Anyway, we are moving into third point, God's words as speech through human lips. God's words as speech through human lips. Okay, frequently in the scripture, God raises prophets through whom he speaks. We see so many prophets in the Bible, down through the Bible, from the Old Testament to the Old Testament, there are so many prophets. And they were the, uh, they were speaking uh, for God. They were, they were the mouth of God. They were mouth of God. 
they have received the message from god and they were communicating and giving to the people countries person families so they were standing uh, for the god's message frequently in scripture we see god raises prophets through whom he speaks so that's the third point once again it is relevant evident that although there were human words spoken in human language by ordinary human beings the authority and the truthfulness never lost it never diminished even though god was speaking through the human being in human language in a human situation uh, it never lost the authority of god authority of god or the truthfulness of, of the message so the third is god was communicating his wonderful message to the people is not only to people of israel but in their universe through the prophets we have 70 prophetical books in the old testament 16 prophets and the 17 prophetical books in the old testament sometimes prophets were speaking prophesying to people of israel some to egypt some to uh uh assyrians and uh, mobites edomites and we see the prophetical ministry in the old testament and they were carrying the authority word of god the truthfulness of god the serious message of god and giving to the people so that's the third way of communicating communicating god's message in the deuteronomy chapter 18 god spoke to moses and there we see the promise of messiah deuteronomy chapter 18 there we see the promise of messiah i will raise one like you and he will speak to the people that what we see in the deuteronomy chapter 18 exactly 18 to 20 we uh, read uh, the raising of one prophet previously that we see in the book of acts that that's a prophetical utterance about uh, uh, messiah messiah so deuteronomy chapter 18 is very important there we can see the rules and regulation regarding the prophets who is a right pro- prophet who is a false prophet how can distinguish a prophet is true or false and we have the uh, roots and regulations and the scale how to recognize a prophet as a true or false that what we see in the book of deuteronomy chapter 18 deuteronomy chapter 18 can you read deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 18 to 20 for them from among the heathen and he put Look my words in 18 to 20 i will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brethren and no. will turn here words in his mouth no sound hello i will raise up for them yeah, yes. can you hear pastor yes, yeah, yes okay, I will, okay okay i will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that i command him and it shall be that whoever will not hear my words which he speaks in my name i will require it of him but the which I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods that prophet cannot hear cannot yeah and okay
Any way, let the problem. Sorry. Okay, in the Deuteronomy chapter 18, God who spoke to Moses regarding a prophet whom God is going to raise up. We know that, that a prophecy is regarding Jesus Christ. That prophecy is regarding Jesus Christ. So, not only that, in, in the Deuteronomy chapter 18, we have the, uh, the rules and regulations. How to know a prophet is uh, true or false? That's what we see in the same chapter. Again, God who spoke to Jeremiah, that what we see in the Jeremiah chapter verse, chapter 1 verse 19. Then Lord put forth message in, in his mouth, that what we see in Jeremiah chapter 1 3. Uh, there are so many other Bible verses. In Jeremiah 1 7, Exodus 4 12, Numbers 22 38. 1 Samuel 15, 3, there are so many other Bible verses that we see that God who spoke to people of Israel and in their world through prophets, through the prophets. In Hebrews chapter 1, 1, in the beginning, God who prophesied to our forefathers through the prophets, Sakman by Sakman, part by part, that what we see in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, by Sakman by Sakman, part by part, our God who spoke to our forefathers through the prophets, Hebrews chapter 1 1, okay, exactly, I think. So, anyway, down through the centuries, to the people of Israel, to other nations, we see the prophetical utterance. The third way of communicating the God's word to the people of the whole world was through the human lips, that is prophets, human lips. Moses and Isaiah, Jeremiah, and there are so many other prophets. Elijah, Elisha, Nathan, there are so many prophets. In the New Testament also we see prophets. There's a prophetical utterance. God who speaks to people through human lips, through the local language, through the people of God, whom God who specially anointed to take away the message of God to the entire world. I think it is very clear. And there were some false prophets some false prophets. Uh, there is a very clear punishment is uttered in book of Ezekiel chapter 13, 1 to 7. When we read Ezekiel chapter 13, 1 to 7, there we see punishment upon the false prophets. If some prophets take the word of God to whom God never told, they are the false prophets and there is a severe punishment that is mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 1 to 7. They were false prophets. Okay, let me conclude that part. That is a very simple part. We know about the prophetical utterance in the Old Testament and notice even today we are sometimes looking whenever we are in a great need, in a distress, in a suffering, we are waiting for a prophetical utterance. Sometimes God speaks to us personally. Sometimes we are uh, trying to get the ministry of other people, men and, men and women of God, and we are uh, waiting for the prophetical address. Sometimes God speaks to us. I think you may have the experience of that. In various ways, God can speak to us. Anyway, the third way of taking the message of God is through the human lips. That's prophetical address. Okay, that's enough. I think so. That's enough. The fourth one, fourth one. That's very important. That's bibliology that we are coming to the close, the last point. Fourth one, God's words in written form. God's words in written form. Already, you can find all these things in chat box uh, by Brother John. God's words in written form. In bracket, you can put the Bible. Bible. God's words in written form. That's Bible.
okay god's words in written form that's the bible in addition to god's words of decree god's words of personal address god's words of spoken through human lips prophetical utterance we come to the final point we also find in scripture several instances where god's words were put in the written form okay this is the fourth one we have seen first one as god's decree second personal utterance third was through a human lips that's prophets second one the fourth one is written bible written form that's the bible okay the first one of these is found in the in the, the narrative of the giving of the two tablets of stone on which were written in the 10 top the 10 commandments that were we see in the book of exodus chapter 31 verse 18 exodus chapter 31 verse 18 with and uh, yeah in the 32 16 40 34 1 to 28 here all we see that the 10 commandments in which god has written his message that's the first written form of Net again gone. <clears throat> okay. okay, so which is the first written document? Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. That what we see in Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. 31, Exodus chapter 31, verse 18. The first of these is found in the narrative of the giving of the two tablets of stone on which were written the ten commandments and he gave to moses when he had okay that what we see in the chapter 31 verse 18 the first written document was ten commandments that was that was written by god in the two tablets of stone okay that we can see the repeated uh documents in the chapter 32 16 32 16 exodus 34 1 and 8 28 1 and 28 first one exodus 31 18 second one 32 16 third one 34 1 and 28 34 verses 1 and 28 all these bible portions we see that the inscription of the or writing of god's word in the two tablets of the stone written by god and we know that as we know that moses the destroyed and again he has taken two tablets and and went up to the sion uh, mount sion and mount sinai and god has given that to moses that's the first written message of god in the in the written form written form again we see the deuteronomy chapter in further writing was done by moses we know the further writing was done by moses that what we see in deuteronomy chapter 31 9 to 13 further writing was done by moses that what we see Deuteronomy chapter 31, 9 to 13. There we see that, and Moses wrote this law. And Moses wrote this law. So who, who has written? And who gave the first document? God himself, written for. 
God Himself in the Sinai, Mount Sinai, the, the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments. The further writing was done by Moses, that what we see in the Deuteronomy chapter 31, 9 to 13, 31, 9 to 13 of the book of Deuteronomy. So Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priests, the sons of Levi who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Yeah. Then oh. Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years at the time of the year of remission of the debts at the Feast of Booths, when all Israel comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place which he will choose, you shall read this law in front of all Israel in their hearing. Shall I continue, Pastor? Uh, up to 9, 13, 9 to 30. Assemble the people, the men and the women and children and the alien who is in your town so that they may hear and learn and fear the Lord your God and be careful to observe all the words of this law. Yeah. Why God has given this whole law? They have to obey. They have to keep. And they have to obey and they have to walk according to the, the law of Moses. Law of God which uh, given to Moses. So it's very, very important. And uh, it was read before people. Okay, again, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 13, 30, 31, again, Deuteronomy chapter 31, 24 to 26, 24 to 26, Deuteronomy chapter 31, 24 to 26, we read that this book, which Moses wrote, was deposited by the side of the Ark of Covenant. Okay, the Ark of Covenant, we can see three things. One was the, this, this, uh, Ten Commandments, two tablets, then manna and a road. Okay, that's all there. Then again, God has spoken to Joshua, then Aisha, then Jeremiah, then so many people of God, the Old Testament, and even the New Testament. God used, we know that entirely, uh, 40 writers who were used by God to write the, uh, the whole Bible. So we are now uh, in, in the written form of the Bible. Anyway, we will deal in, in detail. Okay, the first one written by God, that is the Ten Commandments. Again, Moses has wrote that and he read it. And uh, in, in the Ark of Covenant also, he put the, the Ten Commandments then God has used so many Old Testament men and women of God to write the word of God okay, in the Old Testament. Even the New Testament also. In the beginning, in the New Testament, Jesus promised his disciples that the Holy Spirit would bring to uh, their remembrance the words which uh, uh, Jesus who had already spoken. That what we see in the John chapter 14, verse 26. That's the promise of God. When Jesus was revealing the coming of the Holy Spirit. In the noticement, when we come to the noticement, Jesus himself promised to Jesus' uh, disciples that when the Holy Spirit will come, he will remind what I have taught you. He will remind what I have taught you. And we know that with the power of the Holy Spirit, many men of God were able to write and finish the writing of the Bible. Even though they were new no, not, they were writing the word of God. But God who inspired them to write the word of God in the noticement. So in the noticement and the noticement, we can we can conclude now that that fourth part. God has started to write the the the, the message of God in the tablets of the stone, then give to Moses, then. God has used so many men of God to write the word of God in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, in the New Testament, we know that Peter, Paul, John, Matthew, James, the brother of Jesus, and the Jude, so many such men of God who were writing the word of God. Okay, uh, now we are entering uh, the close of the part, of course, several benefits come from the writing down of the God's words. 
okay benefits of the return form benefits of the return form with that we will conclude the introductory part then we will move to the inspiration then kind of like that authority of the bible like that okay uh, now we are going to deal with uh, several benefits mainly three things several benefits come from the writing down of the words god's word okay first one god's decree second one's personal utterance third one's god's message through the human lips that's the prophets that were and the fourth one written form that's the bible god who started that then moses then so many men of god in the altars men and daughters men to write the written form of the bible okay what's the benefit of this written form benefits of written form several benefits come from the writing down of the god's word number one there is a much more accurate preservation of god's words for subsequent generations if we have a written form there is a much more accurate preservation of god's words there is a much more accurate preservation of god's words for subsequent generations okay before writing before the writing uh, of the bible we know that before this oral tradition oral tradition was prevalent uh, oral tradition then comes the written form oral tradition there are so many evidences in the bible uh, there were people who can memorize the word they can keep in their mind a good memory they were keeping in the memory and uh, they were sharing with other people through the generation to generations because there was all a tradition all tradition only the all tradition was existing before the writing of the word so when we think about the writing the written form of the bible we came to know that there is a much more accurate preservation of god's words for subsequent generation how much we will keep in our memory is it reliable okay depend upon the memory and the repeating of oral tradition is a less reliable method of preserving these words throughout the history okay that i want to tell to depend upon the memory and the repeating of oral tradition is a less reliable method of preserving these words through the history than is their their recording in writing less reliability in all tradition if we have a written form there is more accurate that means accuracy and we can keep it and we can preserve it and we can hand over to coming generation so written form is the fourth stage god has selected wonderful men of god to write the word of god so it is more accurate preservation of god's words for subsequent generations okay this accuracy uh, reliability is very very important we cannot simply depend upon the memory and oral tradition since it is a wonderful message of god okay you can read one verse deuteronomy chapter 31 verses 12 and 13 deuteronomy chapter 31 12 and 13 deuteronomy chapter 31 12 and 13 assemble the people the men and the women and the children and the alien who is in your town so that they may hear and learn and fear the lord your god and be careful to observe all the words of this law their children who do not know who have not known will hear and learn to fear the lord your god as long as you live on the land which is which you are about to cross the jordan to possess yeah yes if there is a written form we can give to the generations they can read read and read they can hear the word of god 
But imagine when we take from our memory and the older tradition, we, we cannot stick on the reliability of the word of God. So before writing, there was no other way. So there was a time uh, memory and uh, oral tradition was prevalent, but God has turned it into writing form. So people can read and the generations can read and meditate it and uh, follow the word of God and obey it. Okay, that's what we have seen in Deuteronomy chapter 13, 31, 12, and 30. Okay, that's the first one. First one is, I can summarize like that. There is a much more accurate preservation of God's words for subsequent generations. We can hand out to generations. It is better and better, better than taking from memory and from the old tradition. Reliability is very important. Okay, second point, second point. The benefit of written word, second benefit. The opportunity for repeated inspection of words that are written down permits careful study and discussion which leads to better understanding and more complete obedience okay good words you can if you can write everything is small sentence uh, okay sentence okay uh, let me uh, dictate that slowly the opportunity for repeated inspection okay the opportunity for repeated inspection of words of words that are written down that are written down the opportunity for repeated inspection of words that are written down permits careful study permits careful study and discussion meditation careful study discussion meditation which leads to which leads to better understanding which leads to better understanding and more complete obedience and more complete obedience let me read once again very important part that's why the opportunity for repeated inspection of words that are written down permits careful study discussion meditation which leads to better understanding and more complete obedience oh very wonderful words okay if you have a written form we can read and read and read and we have to inspect means uh, it is not a negative word inspection it's not a negative word but uh, uh, even the believers of baroa baraya they were checking the word whether as it is they have they have heard the word, they heard the preaching, but they were inspecting and searching the word is whether it is as it is, is there any contradictions? Is there any false teaching? And they were inspecting and they were searching the word and Paul was appreciating that. We need to, we need to search the word. We have to inspect, inspect the word of God means we are not finding to uh, yeah, okay, uh, check the Bible. No, it is not intentional for that. But inspection means uh, it's a deep study and taking the core of the word of God, the real message of God. And when we study the word, discuss it with other people, and when we meditate it, it leads to a better understanding and more complete obedience. It leads to more complete obedience. And uh, it will help us to a better understanding of the word of God. Okay, I think you all join with that. Yes. So it's very important that when we study and discuss and meditate the word of God, it leads to better understanding and more complete obedience of the word of God. Yeah, that's what we experience. We have our Bible in our own language, and all can even even follow English Bible. There are many versions. So that will help us to study the word of God uh, deeply and better understanding. It will lead us to a complete obedience. So return from it is very that God's blessing. Look at third last. Third. Third benefit. God's words in writing are accessible to many more people 
than they are when preserved merely through memory and oral repetition god's words in writing are god's words in writing are accessible to many more people many more people than they are when preserved merely through memory and repetition you can take it like uh, as it is okay i will tell uh, sorry god's words in writing are accessible again sorry okay god's words in writing are accessible to many more people many more people than they are when preserved than they are when preserved merely through memory and repetition okay it is very plain that if we have a written form of the bible we can make use of and we can distribute to many people and they have the access to read the bible and they can keep their own bible for themselves so they can check it and read it and meditate and discuss study and it will give them a better understanding and help them to obey the word of god so it is very important okay let me conclude that uh, benefits there okay now we coming to the inspiration and we have 45 more minutes uh, are you tired since we have a, a another way of studying today so uh, you are putting a lot of efforts today uh, you may get tired anyway we will not repeat it again okay, once again sorry okay now you can write inspiration inspiration of the word of god inspiration inspiration of the word of god inspiration of the word of god under that you can put introduction under that you can put introduction inspiration of the word of god under that introduction see every man has a basis of authority on which he thinks and acts or speak okay every man has their own basis of authority to speak and think and act communists they have their own other religious people have their own and the philosophers are their own everyone has their own basis of authority means authority here means scripture or their book every man has a basis of authority on which he thinks and acts for christians this is the bible for the christians this is the bible this is the bible which is to be claimed to be which is claimed to be a book that is different from all other books for christians our authority basis of authority is bible but we know that the bible is quite different from all other books of this world quite different now we are going to source that next next week you will get more scientific bible and science and we will take the archaeology and also uh, the testimony of the historians philosophers how they have seen the bible and the infallibility of the bible even especially bible and science and archaeology and uh, how the the intellectuals and the philosophers they have seen the bible and their testimony and we have uh, we will see that all in the next week next week i think that will help the arising questions of even our children rising questions of sometimes they ask what is uh, 
uh, uh, fossils. And uh, when we say something about uh, uh, archaeology and uh, and the history of the world, history of the man, they have they may have a lot of questions, but uh, they uh, they may not ask all the questions because sometimes they may ask some logical questions. We may misunderstand them, and uh, they will be more confused sometimes. So with that study, even we can help uh, in our Sunday schools yeah, uh, for our our children also that we will have in the next week. Okay. We know that uh, English word is Bible. Uh, that word is derived from Greek word biblos. Biblos, biblos, biblia, biblos. Biblos is a Greek word, biblos. Ta biblia, that's a Latin word, ta biblia, T-A hyphen. Biblia, Taf Biblia. Uh, Biblos is a Greek word. It's meaning a role, a role or book. A role or book. Because a role means it, it, it came from the role of the papyrus, papyrus, papyrus. Role of papyrus. The leaves of the papyrus used to write the word of God. That's the role of the papyrus. So, Biblos means the book or role, the role of papyrus. Luke chapter 4, 17. And Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. We can read that. So, we will get some understanding of the role, the book. What does it mean? Luke chapter 4, 17. Book of Daniel 9, 2. chapter 4 17 and the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him and he opened the book and found the place when it was written okay the spirit the spirit of the lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free those who are oppressed to proclaim the favorable year of the lord and he closed the book gave it to the gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Yeah. That part is known as the uh, Nasret Manifesto. That that's part is the Nasret Manifesto. When Jesus went to uh, Nasret, uh, the synagogue of Nasret, and he asked, as usual, he went to synagogue, and there's a scroll, scroll, the prophetic scroll given to him, and he has taken the prophetic scroll of a book of Asia, and he has selected chapter 60, 30, 61. That is a prophecy about Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, 61 1 Aisha chapter 61 1. It is, a, it is a quotation from Aisha chapter 61 1 1 and 2. Luke chapter 4 17. Uh, God has anointed me and the spirit of the Lord upon me. Uh, that what we see there. Uh, the Luke chapter 4. That's Nasret Manifesto. What you know, ever heard about Nasret Manifesto? Nasret Manifesto in okay, that's a mission concept in in in. Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 18, 18 to 20. That's the mission manifesto of, of believers, Christian believers, sort of disciples of Jesus. But this is known as the Nasret manifesto is the mission of Jesus Christ. Nasret manifesto means the manifesto. Manifesto is what that's the policy of Jesus, what is glory Jesus is going to do. Okay, it's the beginning of his ministry in the Nasrith uh, synagogue. He has taken that uh, scroll and the prophetical uh, part of the book of Asia uh, from 60, chapter 61, verse 1 and 2. And it was the prophecy regarding Jesus Christ when he will do on earth. That is the mission of Jesus. But our mission is recorded in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. All the authority in heaven and earth is given to me. Go ye therefore, teach all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I will be with you till the end of the earth. That's what we see in the book of chapter, uh, Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. That is the mission, that's a great commission Jesus has given to you and me. 
Matthew chapter 28, 18 to 20. That's a mission, great commission passage, Jesus who given to you and me. But here what we read, Luke chapter 4, 70, that's a Nasrath manifesto, that's a mission of Jesus Christ. That's the mission of Jesus Christ. The, the scroll role was given to him and he has opened that and he read from the book of Aisha chapter 61 1. Okay, Daniel 9 2. Daniel 9 2. The first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the numbers of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Okay. That also we uh, read that the book of God. <clears throat> and uh, Daniel, when he was in the in the in the Babylon capti captivity, and he used to read the word of God, and he found that in the from the book of Jeremiah that, that the exile will end with the 70 years. And uh, then he started to pray and fast for coming back for the people of Israel, to restore the people of Israel from the exile. And uh, Daniel got that, uh, that understanding, the time is so near. I think theologians say that when Daniel was reading that, all the 68 years were covered, only two years are left for the 70 years or completion of the 70 years. Already 68 years are completed and only two years. So he began to fast and, and, and pray for the coming of uh, coming back of people of Israel from the Babylon into Jerusalem for the restoration. So anyway, uh, that's also from the book of uh, the God's book or that's a, that's a role, role. Okay. Anyway, the term scripture. Okay. Another word is scripture. In the New Testament, you can see word scripture for the word of God, word of God. What? Scripture for the word of God. The term scripture is used in the New Testament of the second books of the Old Testament, which were regarded as inspired. Okay, that's a New Testament testimony of the Old Testament. That's a New Testament testimony of the Old Testament. And also, when the men of God in the New Testament, they were writing books, the history of Jesus, and the book of Acts, and even letters. They were not knowing that we are writing the Bible, the part of the words, God's word. They were simply writing the letters to the churches according to the needs of the people. But that time, the New Testament writers testified that Old Testament the scriptures are scriptures, means that's the words of God. New Testament writers acknowledge that when they're quoting from the Old Testament, that's really the prophet of God. That's the word of God. That's the New Testament that was said, New Testament writers who understood. The term scripture is used in the New Testament of the second books of the Old Testament. Okay, Second Timothy 3, 16. Many times we have uh, uh, used that word. All scriptures are God breathed. Second Timothy chapter 3, 16. All scriptures are God all, breathed. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for a proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yeah. So they came to know that all scriptures is God breathed and is given by God, given by God. They were quoting the Old Testament. When we dealing with the, the scripture, they understood the Old Testament scriptures were given by God. They understood the authority of the word of God. And uh, the infallibility of the word of God, because that word came from God, inspired God breather. We will deal that the breathing, breathing, the, the breather, which means God has given that. And the Romans chapter 3, 2 also. Okay, no need of reading all these things. And also the other parts of the New Testament. Second Peter 3 16. Can you read? Second Peter 3 16. Second Peter 3 16. Second Peter 3 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable, 
people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures here peter was referring peter was referring paul when peter was writing to the people who are scattered here and there for the gospel peter was referring paul for the judgment they were misinterpreting the message and writing of paul god has given the wonderful wisdom to paul and he has written the word of god and some people for their judgment they were misinterpreting that that was so peter was accepted acknowledging that paul who wrote that letter with the command of god as the word of god i got i think i think you got the point peter was referring paul because of the command of god and people who are misinterpreting that and they will give the judgment because paul has written that word of god according to the knowledge which god has given to him okay uh kanguri part of uh, this introduction under inspiration the phrase the word of god is used in the notisement of both old testament and the new testament in written form matthew chapter 15 6 john chapter 10 40 35 uh matthew chapter 15 6 john 10 35 here all we see that for the new testament and the old testament the word scripture is used the word of god the word of god is used in the notisement of both old testament and new testament in the ton form can you read matthew chapter 156 matthew 156 he is not to honor his father or 156 or no pastor matthew yeah yes he is not to honor his father or his mother and by this you will you invalidated the word of god for the sake of your tradition okay is it correct yeah yeah correct the people were uh, taking some words of sand and misinterpreting that 15 6 15 there we can see the washing of their hands and all and they were mingling uh the tradition with the word of god okay if you once again if you uh, read that verse you will get the and all will get the clear understanding of that uh in matthew chapter 15 people asked these are disciples you you were your disciples were eating food without washing their hands like that didn't no? 15:1 yes yes pastor yeah. then some pharisees and scribes came to jesus from jerusalem and said why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders uh-huh. for they for they do not wash their hands when they eat bread okay great and he answered and said to them why do you yourself transgress the commandment of god for the sake of your tradition okay for they god were, said only they were placing tradition in the place of god of god with the with the tradition they were uh neglecting the word of god to prove that to 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 obey that tradition to practice that tradition tradition they were neglecting the word of god that was jesus said why you are uh sticking on the tradition in the place of word of god that what we see here in 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 your bible also if in the english bible there will be a, a small heading before chapter 15 tradition and god's command tradition and god's command and the pharisees and the sadducees they gave much importance for tradition that the word of god that was jesus was questioning them giving importance for tradition that word of god okay i will conclude here with this part by some very obvious test the bible is a unique book okay we we know that bible is a unique book it was written over a period of 1500 over a period of 1500 and uh, there were 40 different authors yet it is one book without the contradictions of course there are differences 
but there is no contradiction that is a contradiction if you find any contradictions bring that okay next week we will leave that okay if you find any contradictions when we when we take the uh, historical uh, sometimes uh, there there's a uh, we know hyderabad and secunderabad are twin city like where in jericho there is a twin city jericho is a twin city so when one gospel writer said jesus was coming to jericho another writer said he was passing through jericho but without knowing there is a twin city we are uh, we may say that there is a contradiction one gospel writer says coming to jericho another writer uh, says that he was passing just jericho so coming to jericho and passing jericho that's a different contradiction but when we come to know that city that's a twin city it is very easy that okay when we take the uh, one of the uh, church members asked me that uh, Uh, Bertima, Bertima, Bertima. Matthew says there are two blind men, but Luke says one. One gospel writer says two blind men, blind men approach Jesus, crying and approaching. Matthew said like that, and Luke said he was not telling that one or two, but he was saying Bertima, simply mentioning a, a name of a single person. So we may say that there's a contradiction. in accounts but when we study the holy bartimai who cried and approached jesus maybe the other per- person was accompanying him but only bartimai who said that the son of david how mercy on me that word came only from the bartimai but another uh, blind man was accompanying with him that what matthew says but so he is matthew he is a disciple he is a eyewitness Luke he is a very story man he gave importance for the one who cried out and said the, that that word son of man and he gave importance for that crying and that person because he only cried but Matthew as a eyewitness of Jesus he uh, said this apostle and he was there and he said that there was two blind men Luke did not tell any one or two but he said Bartimaeus said so when we read that there's a contradiction one say one and the says two so when we study the background and the city and the background there is no contradiction such a way there is no contradiction because it came from single god one god even though god used 40 different persons from the different lifestyle okay kings philosophers even the shepherds farmers okay ordinary people and intellectual people like that solomon okay but the the same spirit to who let them all inspired them to write the word of god that one they what i want to tell okay for the 5500 1500 is okay now we are 12 here 12 here if i give a paper and i ask you to write something about the love okay what's the god's love or biblical love in the love and we are 12 now here we are living in kuwait same time same age all are believers all are children of god but yet that 12 papers may be different we are living in a, in in the same country all are children of god having the same dogmas means the bible truth and another thing we are all looking for the coming of jesus christ but when we write uh, one subject right now and we will have different views there will be contradictions not only simply difference differences and contradictions are okay you know, we know that that's two that two things differences will be there but if contradictions of course there will be contradictions how we see love maybe our statement will be differ from another person but in the bible there is no contradictions they were living from 1000 1500 years the total span of they are writing time ages 1500 40 writers from three continents most of them did not see they were from different start of life but the same holy spirit united together there is no contradiction because the same spirit who inspired all 40 men of god to write the word of god that's a wonderful thing that's why i said bible is unique it is different from other scriptures and manifestos okay let me come close here 
and it, it is one book without contradictions in a, in what what it says and what it just says is remarkable okay uh, especially not this one and what it is it says is remarkable for it speaks of equal easy and authority easy and authority of the known and unknowable known and unknowable of the pleasant and unpleasant of man's accomplishments and failures and of the past and the future okay that all we see in the bible okay let me read once again and what it says is remarkable remarkable okay for it speaks with equal easy and authority easy and authority bible speaks with equal easy and authority of the known and unknowable of the known and unknowable of the pleasant and unpleasant of the pleasant and unpleasant of man's accomplishments and failures of man's accomplishments and failures of the past and the future Okay, last sentence. Few book books ever attempt such a scope. Few books, few books ever attempt such a scope. None is completely accurate except the Bible. None is completely accurate except the Bible. Few books ever attempt such a scope. None is completely accurate except the Bible. That's a wonderful thing. That's a remarkable. Uh, what we say this Bible is unique because it came from God, and we see the inspiration of God. That that's the main thing. What we have written and discussed. Okay. Uh, you can write nested title, but I won't go there. We have 20, no, 20, 15, yeah, 20 more means. If you have uh, any doubts, we will deal we, uh, we'll de 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 that and we will conclude because uh, already you have put a lot of efforts today. So last 20 minutes, if you have any ask, uh, questions, we can discuss that. Uh, okay, inspiration and the canon, uh, I thought that we can cover all these things, but we don't have the much time and also you are tired. Next title, what is meant by inspiration? What is meant by inspiration? What is meant by inspiration? That's the title. Okay, one sentence I will read. Okay, well, uh, may not write. Okay, it, it will come in the next week. Okay, uh, under this we will we will have a we will have a, a definition of inspiration. What is really definition? Uh, inspiration. Inspirations. What is mean by uh, uh, inspiration? Already we have read one verse. God, all scriptures are God breathed. God breathed. Okay, that's exactly uh, from the scriptural point of view. Scriptural point of view, breathing of God. The God who breathed it. Okay, that's a uh, real meaning. Okay. Anyway, we will uh, deal that. Okay. Uh, uh, what is exactly inspiration means? Then we will take the seven, so six or seven uh, different views of the inspiration. Different uh, views of inspiration. Views of the inspiration. Natural views. The dictation views. The uh, verbal inspiration is there. Like that, there are many views, and we will deal that. Then we will come to the exact what we believe. Okay, that there will be a conclusion. Hmm? There will be a conclusion. Okay, 
Okay, let me say one or two things. I'm going to say three things. That will be our conclusion, but we will deal everything in the, in the detail later, okay? God superintended, but did not dictate the material, okay? God superintended, God superintended, but did not dictate the material. That's our stat. For the Islam, they believe they are, they are, the, the Quran is dictator, but Bible is not dictation, no dictator one, but God who superintended, but did not dictate the material. That's the one stat, one point. Second one. He used human obeys and their own individual styles. He used, God used human orders and their own individual styles. Individual styles. You have anything to say that individual style? Okay, you can. Uh, why I'm telling these three things, you can think, and the rest can next week, next week, you can come with us some questions, of course. Okay, God has used the human orders and their own individual states. When we take the book of Luke, Luke Luke's gospel, Luke, when he, uh, we know that he's only Gentile writer in the Bible, okay? When we take the 40 writers, he's the only Gentile, Gentile. Uh, uh, non-Jew is Luke, he's, he was a doctor and uh, not only that he was a historian, he was a historian that what uh, he writes in the beginning of his gospel, read like that. Verse 3. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it uh, seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you. Most excellent Theophilus. He was writing to Theophilus. He was a historian. He searched everything. He and, and, and he searched everything and he put it in order and everything. Very systematic writing of, uh, and they have their own taste and everything. So, uh, Peter also testified, we have read that Paul in his knowledge, the knowledge which God has given, according to uh, the knowledge, God inspired Paul to write his epistles. But some people who misinterpreted for their judgment, that's the Peter's uh, testimony regarding Paul. So it of course know that we, we know that Paul's writing was different from style of writing was different from Peter's. Luke's writing, writing style was different from Matthew. Matthew who wrote to who? Whom? Jews. Jews. Matthew who wrote his gospel to Jews. That's why the genealogy started from Abraham, Abraham to Jesus Christ. But Luke, who wrote his gospel to whole world, whole world of Gentile. So he started the genealogy from Jesus to its ascended form, it reached to God, Adam, and Adam was the son of God. So Luke started his genealogy in chapter 3 from Jesus to God. But Abraham, sorry, but uh, Matthew started his genealogy in his gospel from Abraham to Jesus. Why? What's the difference between two styles? Of course, Matthew was writing to Jewish people. So Abraham, Abraham was the father of uh, Jewish people. So Abraham to Jesus. But Luke, as a Gentile, he has written the genealogy of the whole humanity, not the genealogy of Ma or, or Jews that Matthew used because he wrote that epistle to, uh, sorry, that gospel to 
Jewish people. So he used from Abraham to Jesus. But Luke, he was writing a genealogy of the whole humanity, whole humanity, both Jews and Gentiles. They just started from Jesus to Father, God. So there's a difference between uh, writing. So second point is that he used the human others and their own individuals. Last one, nevertheless, last three, a third point, nevertheless, the product to us, nevertheless, the product to us in its original manuscripts without error. Nevertheless, the product was in its original manuscripts without error. There is no error in the Bible. There is no error. Nevertheless, the product was in its original manuscripts without error. Okay, of course, we will study that language. It has its own limitation. Translations has limitations. But we are talking about the, the, the manuscripts, the original word of God. There is no error because Bible is invariable. God who used the human writers to write the word of God. That's all we finish here. Next class, we will start with the views of inspiration. Then we will come to the right stand. Then we will move to canon, authenticity, uh, uh, also other parts of the uh, study of the bibliology. Anyway, or I'm tired. You, okay, we have a 14 more minutes. You have if you have any question, you can ask for 10 minutes that and we will pray and can go to our class. Regarding this subject, okay. Regarding this, if you have anything. Today we had a very slow journey. Okay, last class tradition. Okay, somebody, Brother Christy is there? Ah, Christy, 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 Christy. Brother Christy, did you write anything? You did you send anything to me after last week? Any doubt regarding tradition? Brother Christy, I think Christy. I don't know whether it is a true or I have seen a dream. I don't know. I have. Like that, I have uh, last, but that's why I'm asking. I have seen a. So it's a, correct. It's correct. It's correct. I message you. Okay, okay. But we, after that, my I phone got stuck. My phone got stuck. But for the delay. Sorry. Yesterday I did not see that. Even there is a director delete also. I did not see anything. Okay. I did. I did not. Uh, <laughs> I did not. Uh, uh, Sir, still you have the uh, confusion regarding that. I, I was talking about tradition, but that I as strictly I said that I'm not talking about the tradition of any church. We don't have that church tradition. But tradition oh. means through down through the centuries, through the councils discussions, this the the, 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 the theology formulated through the councils. The first council was Jerusalem Council, Jerusalem Council, that what we see the Book of Acts, chapter 15. Then Nation Council, uh, Council of uh, Carthage, Car Council of Ephesus. There are so many councils. For Catholics, uh, they have uh, their own councils. Okay, through the council, whenever the uh, Arianism, Arianism, the areas, man, man areas, uh, is uh, philosophy or is understanding thinking is known as Arianism. When Arius, Arius began to question the divinity of Jesus Christ, he believed that there was a time when Jesus was not. There was a time when Jesus was not. So he was um, asking and doubting about the divinity of Jesus Christ, the coexistence, coexistence of Jesus with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. And he believed that there was a time when Jesus was not, when God who started to create, God first of all created Jesus Christ, Son. Then God used Jesus Christ as the agent of other creation. That's what Arius believed. Now we know that Yahweh witnesses are the followers of the Arianism. When that false teaching came out, came up and began to spread in the church, Nation Council, 
in national council church fathers came together and they discussed and uh, they excommunicated areas from the church and they refuted the areas of we had a question today, today i think it is national council why the decree of national council it was against the arianism it was against the arianism so i was talking about that tradition when we take the theology the theology has a great tradition the tradition down through the councils whenever the questions arise that came church fathers theologians they took they sat together they discussed and they made the correct theology that what we see in the bible also jerusalem council i have shown everything with the tradition okay i'm never talked about the tradition of the any church i don't believe that but i'm talking about this tradition is it clear christy brother christy hello okay if you, uh, any one of you hello have, hello uh, you, uh, is, is it clear uh, sir sir uh, yes it's clear my um, uh, the thing is that are there no traditions of the nominal churches that are right today like based on the theology that we are learning we are not at all concerned about that what's a tradition what's church tradition see the the point is sir who is the real christian the point is now we are also some way wavering away and we are also going away from the the focal point we might say we are the we are right they say they are right and we believe that we are following the apostolic traditions but at some point uh, there is a belief that we are also going far away uh, in some other matters it is not the matter of this church and that church if you follow the bible okay if we follow bible also there is another question is how you interpret that's a hermeneutic problem sir Sir, how sir, you sir, interpret the bible sir, sir i am not talking on a personal level i understand from a study perspective we will have to uh, yes. we we take notes from you we take uh, references from your lectures and then we'll have to study as per that and we are not going to get marks if you are not doing but, well in that but the but, point is we are also in some way you do, do you not agree with that fact in see, some no, other but, way we are also one thing i, I must clear make clear that i never talked about the any church tradition in that class i never talked about anything a single word about the uh, about the the church tradition uh, as a supportive or anything we will deal that when the ecclesiology will come okay there arises i was talking about that the tradition is the theology came through the councils when i explained that i pleaded you that don't think i am talking about any tradition don't misguide that don't take to there we are talking about the tradition through the councils that theology came but don't think about the such tradition that's why i mentioned that i am never talked about that it is not the time to discuss about the ecclesiology now it is the theology ecclesiology when ecclesiology will come if i or another teacher will come the you can ask that question the ecclesiology sub tradition it's a tradition will come there but basically i must say that i don't believe any sub tradition what the tradition when the coast or orthodox we know that as great schism that's a great schism in uh, 1054 the great schism that's a orthodox church and roman catholics were divided that's a great schism okay yes, uh, yes, that is one holy yes, apostolic and catholic then church deviated yes, from the apostolic church uh, apostolic doctrine and they made their own system and tradition beliefs and everything okay and yes, uh, that we see uh, from you know uh, uh, milan edict of milan you know edict of milan just the edict of milan uh, okay. constantine and constantine that emperor received yes, christianity sir. yes sir and he declared christian church as the official religion of a roman empire empire when he yes, became a christian he declared yes. christianity as the uh, as the official religion of the roman empire yes, thus sir. far church was a persecuting persecuted community persecuted church they were 
always persecuted by Jews and the Romans. But this edict of Milan, Mil Mil that's edict of Milan, the declaration from Milan, the Constantine when received Jesus Christ and Christianity, he said that church will no Christian church will will not be no longer a persecuted community. They will uh, Christianity will be the official religion of the Roman Empire. So what happened? Yeah. All are came to the church. All Gentile people without any genuine conversion, they came to the church because of that bit. What happened? Church became paganized. Church became paganized. The pure church became paganized. From there, we see a lot of Gentile practices in the church. So church began to. So what happened that thus far the Rome was the center of the church? Then for that the center of the church from Rome to Byzantine. Byzantine means nowadays uh, Turkey, Turkey, Byzantine, Byzantine, Byzantine is in Turkey. Okay, uh, that the head of the church uh, is transferred to uh, Turkey, Turkey. So tradition, Western tradition and Eastern tradition came because of that. So tradition, Eastern tradition that is uh, uh, that, that Orthodox people, they have their own tradition with the Eastern part and Roman Catholics, they're best angels. Okay. That began from the fourth century. Then in 1054, that's the 11th century, that official division was took place. They had their own tradition, their own beliefs and way of looking at an everything. How can we support this one? From Roman Catholic, Protestants came, Protestants from Baptist, Pentecost, and numerous churches came from, okay, Roman Catholic, from their Protestant, Protestants also spread it like this. Then Eastern Church, from Eastern Church, Orthodox, there is a Russian Orthodox, such many Orthodox churches. Then Jacobi came from, from the Orthodox, Martomites came from Martomites, uh, Evangelicals, the Evangelicals were divided. This is the stream of the, how can we believe such a tradition with the Bible? We cannot deliver really support that. We are not talking about that. So we cannot say that my tradition is better than yours. That is utterly pagan, pagan, pagan that we cannot see the Bible. We have the tradition, that's the tradition of Jesus. We follow the apostolic uh, method. When we deviate from the apostolic doctrine, one holy apostolic and Catholic, we also having the tradition. Even Pentecostal means the IPC, AG, Chatsubosh, Sharon, okay, TPF, they may have their own traditions. That is from not from the Bible. We have to correct that. So it is not the matter of debating that my tradition is tradition between. Come back to the Bible. What Bible says, that is true. It is not, no, I, I don't think need you to, to talk about any human tradition. Here, yes. Matthew chapter 15, one, we have read now that people were giving importance for hand washing and all. Jesus said, why you are looking for tradition? For your tradition, you are exchanging the word of God for your tradition. Jesus refuted that, okay? That's the same thing I want to tell you. Uh, sir, uh, uh, Yes. What okay, we will is, talk outside, okay? Ch churches, have... are called, churches are called to spread light into the darkness. If any tradition you are following, if you are not spreading light into the darkness, that means that church is a stagnant church. Yeah, sure. I get that. I'm not opposed to that point. Whether it is any any traditional Pentecost. No, no, no. My, my, my uh, question was on uh, WhatsApp. Uh, oh. Brother James, my question was on WhatsApp to pastor and it was a detailed question. Pastor uh, responded in the, like there is no, less time. So. Yes, yes. Tradition, uh, whatever tradition it is, you know, we have to spread light into the darkness. Yeah, I, I believe to, that. I believe we have that. to reach out, reach out to the people, yes. unreached people. And if you have to reach out, you have to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. You have to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Sir, Brother James, you are deviating from the point. I am all for it. I am not opposed to that. My question was different. 
Brother Christy, I believe, I believe passed a misty or message. He, he, he I, I think, accidentally deleted it or something. So, what Pastor was trying to say is he did not, he just uh, saw the message in a glance, but he, he did not see the whole message. So, if you can resend the message, maybe you can I have, have a personal discussion. I have discussion. not deleted it. <laughs> <That will be. laughs> I did not even you have deleted it. Yesterday, I did not even read a full also. So I, I didn't have, delete. Uh, I didn't delete it. It's with me, and it's before me right now. <laughs> yes. No, no. I think. I think maybe Pastor I'll just had a it. glance. Yeah, yeah. Send maybe, again. maybe send again. Maybe send again. You are. I. I. Sir, I mean, there's okay, a confusion. Sir, we will. Sir, we will. Sir, we will send sir, again. Sir, you in detail outside the class. Okay. Sir, excuse me, sir. As a parting question, I just uh, these things that keeps uh, bothering me is. Uh, why are our youngsters no more interested so much into worship in our mainstream churches? Why are they going to the new churches? Why uh, uh, we are not able to uh, correctly guide them through the power of the Holy Spirit? I, 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 I am not able to uh, get, an, uh, get a proper answer to that. Maybe we can uh, discuss it later. On. Brother Christy, one simple answer is for, one simple answer for that because I am a person who left the main, mainstream church. The reason is simply politics. Okay, yes. can you name any church have, which is not yes, the politics? Yes, yes, That's that is one major youngsters. factor. That is, that is the only surely. reason. That surely. is the only reason we youngsters surely. are moving. I want it. No, I want an answer from more, more authoritative source. In this case, who is uh, Pastor uh, Joe Philip, who is our lecturer. <laughs> Brother Christy, Brother Christy, all the denominations, eh? all the denominations have their own limitations. When they are deviating from the Bible, they, that should be corrected. So we cannot simply take uh, mainland churches or new generations. See, this is the time of what to say, we are looking for uh, new things that is sir. not only within the church, outside the church also we see that. Oh. Respected, respected sir, with due respect no, 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 to see, all what you are saying. Out of our subject, we will, we will deal with the, okay, this is outside the class, okay, if now yes. 10, 1, 10, 1, okay. Yes, uh, entirely, this is no, not <laughs> uh, coming under this class. So when I, I I at the last class I am what I said it is not I am not talking about the church tradition, uh, not to misunderstand me. I was talking about the tradition of the theology that came through the councils. I am thinking of that way, uh, and I was telling that feeling that don't take it with the church tradition, but somehow we. <laughs> But now talking with that, okay, that's not the part of ecclesiology, uh, that's the part of the ecclesiology, not the part of this theology. I've never talked about the history or tradition of the any indie denominated church. You simply even uh, don't yes, use the church also. Take denomination, that's better to say. Tradition of the denomination that go never accepts. Okay, we come, to, come back to the Bible. If male church or no church, church, if anything to be corrected, so it should be corrected. That's all. My conclusion: we have to take everything, each and each and each and everything. Okay, it has so many things to touch with related to that. That we will do outside the class. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Okay, ask me yours. Ask me yours. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you, Lord, for this beautiful evening again that you gave us together as a church to study the uh, part from the systematic theology. Thank you, Lord, for the, that you are enabling the teacher or a professor to teach us, to, to help us, to guide us, to direct us, and help. And thank you, Lord, that you are helping each one of us also to concentrate and focus and study and learn, Lord, whatever is being taught and whatever is being instructed. I pray that, Lord, whatever we learn, more than the head knowledge of Father, I pray that this, we will be able to use this in our practical life. We'll be able to use this for our missions. We'll be able to use this in our daily life to impact the people around us. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity again. I bless, we pray that you bless each and every one of us who's attending and help us to become uh, and be the light that you want us to be. And we will be your mouth and your hands and your legs and your eyes in the world that we live in, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father, again. This time again, bless every one of us as we move into the next week. 
tomorrow onwards, Lord, let your light guide us. Thank you, Father. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Love of the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay.